All right, hi everyone. Welcome to PMP Live. My name is Michelle and I'm a bookseller with the Children and Teens Department. Thank you for joining us today in this new format. Since this is a new adventure, please bear with us as we work out any kinks and get more comfortable. We are so excited to welcome author and illustrator David Shannon here today to tell us more about his new picture book, Roy Digs Dirt. David was born here in DC, but grew up in Washington state. David has always loved drawing pictures. I bet some of you like to draw in color. He also wrote and illustrated some other books you may have, A Bad Case of Stripes and No David, which received a Caldecott honor. He has written and or illustrated over 35 children's books. Now, in just a moment, he's gonna talk to us. If you have a question for David, you can click on the Ask a Question button at the bottom of your screen and add one there. You can also vote on your favorite questions and at the end, we'll have some time to go over some with David. You can also click the Buy the Book button, it's green, to get your own copy of Roy Diggs Dirt. We'll order it for you and ship it free of charge. If you are a student joining us today, please check with an adult before buying anything. And don't worry about turning off your webcam or mic for our event. You can see us, but we cannot see you. Thanks again for supporting our bookstore and joining us today. All right, let's go ahead now and get started. David, over to you. Hey, everybody. How you doing? I hope you're staying healthy and safe at home and not getting too bored. Um, so... Uh, here I am in my studio. Luckily, that's at my house, so I get to, you know, I get to keep painting and drawing. Obviously, I haven't taken the time to clean it up. Clean your studio, David. So I thought today um, I would read my new book to you guys. This is called Roy Digs Dirt, and it's about my dog. Roy really is my dog. Now, some of you may know who Fergus is. And Fergus used to be my dog, and unfortunately he passed away a little while ago. But you know, he was really old. He lived a very good long life. Uh, he was 19 years old. So I'll do the math for you. That's, that's 133 in dog years. So, and I'm gonna keep putting, you know, I put Fergus in all my books somewhere. Sometimes he's really hidden, and sometimes he's not so hidden. But I'm going to keep doing that. Um, but listen, don't don't tell Roy because he thinks it's him, okay? Because in real life, Roy and Fergus look just alike. So I had to change what Roy looked like a little bit so people wouldn't get confused. But his personality is the same, and Roy's personality is way different than Fergus's. I'll give you an example. Fergus thought that he was a human. Roy thinks I'm a dog. So that, because Roy's kind of a nut and he really likes dirt. So let's have the story here. Roy Digs Dirt by me, David Shannon. Roy Digs Dirt. He digs dirt before breakfast, after lunch, and before and after dinner. Dirt makes Roy happy. Roy is almost always happy because he is almost always dirty. Roy sits in dirt, he lies in dirt, and sometimes he rolls around in dirt. Roy digs dirt. Roy thinks dirt makes him look handsome. Roy likes to bury things in dirt. He buries balls, sticks, chew toys, squeaky toys, bones, rocks, leaves, pieces of bark, and rawhide twisties. Sometimes he just buries more dirt in the dirt. Roy digs dirt. Roy finds buried treasure in dirt. Buried treasure is exciting. And you see this big fossa here? That's a true story. Roy dug that up when he was just a puppy. It was it was bigger than he was. So we've saved that. That's become a family artifact. 
Roy eats dirt, sniffs dirt, watches dirt, and listens to dirt. Worms and bugs hide in the dirt, but not for long. That worm looks a little bit worried. <laughs> Roy's imaginary friend lives in the dirt too. He plays with it and talks to it. Roy named his imaginary friend, Roy. The only thing bad about dirt is ants. Roy does not dig ants. When it rains, Roy digs mud. Mud might be even better than dirt. Mud is like dirt gravy. Roy does not dig baths. Baths are the opposite of dirt. I'll tell you what, Roy's getting pretty dirty right now too. Because we can't take him to what we call the pretty parlor to get a bath. So I'm going to have to give him a bath, and that's not going to be fun. I'm going to have to wear protective gear. When there isn't any dirt, Roy digs rugs. He digs blankets when he's in bed, and he digs newspapers when he's mad. Roy doesn't like being away from his dirt, so then he digs at the back door. The jungle grows out of the dirt in the backyard. The dirt in the jungle is moist. It smells good too. Roy likes to explore the jungle. It's a good place to hide. And... Pounce! <laughs> Roy really does this too. He hides in the bushes and sneaks around. And then when I walk by, he jumps out and pounces on me. Sneak attack. <laughs> Whoa! Critters come to the jungle when it gets dark. Roy barks, get away from my dirt. Roy digs barking at critters. And this happens every night. Tonight, there's a skunk in the jungle. Now Roy's dirty and stinky. Did I mention Roy hates baths? <laughs> now, here's something that not too many people have noticed yet, but the spots on Roy's back, they spell Roy. He'd probably forget his name if it wasn't written on his back. At night, Roy digs in his sleep. <laughs> yeah, he dreams about dirt. Every morning he runs outside to see if the dirt is still there. It's the same dirt, but it seems brand new to Roy. The whole world is built on top of dirt. Roy digs the world. And that's the end of the story. Oh, there's a little thing on the back, too. Roy chasing all the critters. So I hope you liked that. I know Roy does. He likes all books that are about him. Anything about him, Roy likes. So I thought I would draw him for you real quick. And then we'll answer a few questions after that. So let's start with Roy's head. We'll start with his ear. And he's got a pointy ear here, like that. At least one ear is pointy. The other ear is kind of floppity, like that. And then we got his cheeks. Down here. And then let's put his nose right in the middle. And Roy's got a beautiful nose. I call it a beezer. A beautiful black beezer. I say, Roy, you have such a beautiful black beezer. And he says, yes, I do. There we go. And then his eyes, Roy's eyes are kind of goofy. 
Because, you know, Roy is, he's, he's a goofball. He's a nut. So he's got one eye that's looking over there because he's wondering what's going on over there. And then his other eye is looking over here because he's wondering what's going over here. Roy, Roy is wondering what's going on everywhere. There's his eyebrows and a big smile. And Roy really does smile. You know, there's some people that say dogs don't have emotions, but I do not think they're right. And Roy just has this big grin on all the time, especially when he's in trouble. He thinks that's hilarious. Like we say, Roy, no. And he goes, <laughs> And then we'll put his tongue. He's got a great big tongue, too. He's not a very big dog, but he's got a big dog tongue. And then it's kind of funny. His teeth, his teeth are kind of human looking, which is sort of funny because, like David, he's got those pointy teeth, doesn't he? So David's kind of got dog teeth. Roy's got human teeth. All right. Oh, we better put on his collar. And Roy, you know, when it's time for him to start settling down and stop doing battle with the critters outside, we take his collar off. And that's kind of a sign to him that it's time to start getting sleepy. It's kind of like when your mom and dad tell you to, to put your jammies on. And Roy has come to expect that collar to be taken off. So I'll say, collar, and he'll go, okay. And I take his collar. Sometimes he goes, okay, before I even say collar. Sometimes I forget and I go, oh, yeah, you're right. It's time. Time to get sleep. Then we'll put his front paws here. Like that. Another one here. And then I'm making Roy just like sitting on his fanny. You know, dogs, I guess, don't really sit this way. But it really captures Roy's personality. That he's pretty, he just likes the world and he especially likes dirt. And I'm drawing him today. I'm going to draw him sitting on top of a big pile of dirt because that's his favorite spot to be. So then we got to draw that little pads on his feet, right? You know, my daughter calls these toe beans, which I think is really funny. Because they do. They look like little beans. Well, there's his toe beans. Right there. And let's not forget his tail. I did a drawing a couple days ago. I forgot to put his tail on. He didn't like that at all. All right. And let's see. There it is. And then the big pile of dirt. Right there. He's pretty funny. Okay. Let's put in just a little bit of color as soon as I get done with this. So I'm going to sort of just sketch this out and then do some kind of coloring in later on. So you guys don't have to sit there and watch me color because that's not very exciting. All right. So let's put some shadow on him. I've got this blue pen. And you know, when you put shadow on stuff, it gives it shape. Instead of it just being flat, it makes it look, things look round or cubed or one thing in front of another. So if we put this right here. Like that. See how that's already starting to work? Now we can see that his front paws are in front of his stomach and that he's not just a flat dog made out of cardboard. 
Yeah, you know, I need my glasses. I can see. Here's my glasses. You know what the problem with losing your glasses is? <laughs> yeah, you can't see to look for them, can you? Here. Yeah, this helps his grin too. See, all of a sudden he's got like cheeks, a little shadow under his tongue. Okay, and uh, you know what else? I, I like to make him. Yeah, kind of funny hairs all over the place, so we put those in too. Starting to look like Roy, isn't it? So I hope you guys aren't getting too restless and bored at home, you know. The good thing, though, about getting a little bit bored once in a while is that's when you get creative. That's when I get ideas for books and you might, you know, that's a, you can think up a game to play or use your imagination with your toys, use your toys in a different way than you usually do. I used to have GI Joes when I was little, but I didn't play army with them very often. I, I made them into a rock band one time. I put clay on their heads and Gave him long hair. <laughs> okay, and then I'm going to put a little yellow on here, too, sort of where the sun hits him. It just makes things look cool. Put a little yellow on his teeth. Yeah, there we go. All right, now, okay, his tongue. And Roy has a beautiful tongue. It's really red. It's, it's, most dogs' tongues are pink, but Roy's is red. And uh, he is a really slobbery kisser. He likes to lick my face. And uh, you know what he really likes to lick are my eyes. He likes to wash my eyeballs. And he'll come up and, oh, Roy. <laughs> I complain, but I really like it. And his collar's red. There we go. I'm going to put just a little bit of pink on that tongue, too. Brighten it up a little. Okay, we're getting there. And then what's his name? It says Roy on it. All right, now we gotta put the dirt on there. Yeah. Cause Roy is always dirty. He's got a dirty face. He's got a pretty much dirty everything. That's there. And let's see what else we have over here. Always got dirt everywhere. He especially has dirt on his paws because he's from digging, you know. And he he really does. He buries his bones. And I mean, just like a cartoon dog, you know. And it's pretty funny because sometimes he buries his bones and then he forgets where he buried them. <laughs> he gets really mad. You know, where's my bone? And sometimes I know where he buried it because I was watching him. And I'll say, hey, I'll tell you what, I'll go, I'll go get your bone for you. And I go dig it up for him. And then he gets mad at me for spying on him. So, you know, go figure. Try to do a guy a favor, you know. And he's got little holes and stuff all over the backyard. And it's funny because Fergus didn't 
Fergus didn't bury things at all. So Roy's a lot different. It's weird how two dogs can look so much alike and, and then be so different. All right, now the last thing I'm going to put on here. See, you now I'll color all this in later, all this dirt behind him. Yeah. The last thing I want to put in there, though, is a dandelion right here because you know what? Roy eats dandelions. <laughs> I told you he was a nut. He doesn't eat this guy. He doesn't eat the uh, yellow kind. He eats the. He eats them when they get all puffy. He just walks around on our walk and goes, hum, hum. and <laughs> I don't, I don't know what they taste like, but I think what he likes is that they tickle his tongue. <laughs> so if you looked at my street out front of my house, all along the the parking strips and stuff are just these stalks of, of dandelions with nothing on them because he's eating them all. All right. So there's the dandelion. Okay. And uh, then I got one other thing I like to do. I've got this pen that's white, which is pretty cool. Because then I can go in and I can do, get that started. I can do things like this. I can make his nostrils there. See, and I could put a little light hitting a, his tongue. A bit on the middle there. I can do stuff like that on his paw so you can see his toe beans. Isn't that cool? This is my favorite part. All right. And so there he is. There's my dog, Roy. Oh, forgot one thing. Pink. Pink on the ears. There we go. Now, when this is all done, I'll finish this uh, when we're done today. And uh, when it's done, it'll look like this. And that is my dog, Roy. And like I said, Roy digs politics and pros, and so do I. And I really appreciate them setting this all up so that we could spend a little time together. Now, we have some more time. So uh, who's got some questions? Do we have some questions? All right. Thanks, David. That looks awesome. And yep, we have some time now to answer some questions. We're going to go through as many as possible before our time ends today. So let's see. Our first question is from Willa. She says, hi, my name is Willa. I'm six hi, years old. I like to write books. Do you have any advice for me? Oh, uh, yes, I do. You know, whoever likes to, I always do this. I see. All right, who likes to draw pictures? And who likes to write books? And <laughs> who likes to do both? And who has three arms? <laughs> <laughs> Great question. <laughs> so if you want to be an illustrator, that's the person who does the pictures or an author or both. The best thing to do is do it all the time. Uh, if you like to write, write lots and lots of stories and write stories about things that you're interested in, you know, that you like, because you'll spend more time doing it. You'll have more fun and that'll come out in the story. Um, you know, when I was a kid, I liked comic books. And back then, the graphic novels, they hadn't been invented yet. And so people didn't think that comic books were art. Mm -hmm. And they'd say, well, yeah, you know, that's a good drawing. I don't know why you waste your time on that. You should be doing mm -hmm. art. And uh, I said, well, I like to draw these. And you know what? I still use things I learned about telling stories with pictures in my books now, stuff that I learned from comic books. So mm -hmm. do, do stuff that you like. And, um, and I don't know if you know this, Willa, but um, No David, I got the idea for that from a book I made when I was about your age. Um, cool. Except back then we didn't start reading it soon. So the, the original book was, I drew a bunch of pictures of me doing stuff I wasn't supposed to do. And the only words in the book were No and David. 
because that's all I knew how to spell. <laughs> so <laughs> my guess is that you could spell more than two words. So any of you guys can write your own book, you know, and my mom saved it and then showed it to me when I was a grown up. And I went, you know what? This might make a good children's book. So I drew new pictures and I wrote a few more words. And that's the no David that you guys have seen. So Willa, make sure you tell your mom when you write books and stuff, make sure you tell her to save them because it could put your kid through college. <laughs> that's <laughs> wonderful. Thanks, David. All right. Let's see. Uh, Leopold and Amelia ask, um, what's your favorite book? My favorite book that I made? Well, I guess it's up to you. Yeah, perhaps that you've made or others that you enjoy reading yourself. Yeah, I, well, I like my, my favorite uh, author is a guy named Charles Dickens. He's the guy that wrote the story about Scrooge, A Christmas Carol. Mm -hmm. And he wrote Oliver. So I like those. Uh, my favorite book that I wrote, you know, I get asked that. And I like them all for different reasons because they remind me of different things. Like Alice the Fairy is based on my daughter. So um, I, I like that. I, you know, Good Boy Fergus reminds me of Ferg. So I like that one. Um, but probably if I had to pick one, it would be No David because that's the one that's, um, that's uh, the kids like the best and I get lots of letters. And so it's really, it's been a wonderful thing to have, to have David in my life, even if he is a troublemaker. <laughs> so, all right, let's see. Um, Levi asks, he said, hi, I'm a John Eaton first grade student and he wants to know what's the first book that you wrote. Oh, well, if you don't count that No David book I wrote when I was little, it was, uh, uh, the first book I wrote was called How Georgie Radburn Saved Baseball. And it was a time, it was about a time in America, I made it all up, where um, baseball is against the law. And so without baseball, spring never comes. And it's always mm -hmm. winter. It's a little like right now. <laughs> <laughs> let's hope let's hope that it doesn't stay winter uh, i'm really missing the baseball season so gotcha well let's see going back to no david um we have shira lanter says my first grade students love your book no david but they all want to know why he's eating a chicken leg including the bone when it shows him eating with his mouth open so isn't you that horrible <laughs> <laughs> The thing is, in, in No David, what I tried to do with pretty much every picture was to put all these things in the picture to make it look like a disaster was about to happen. Okay. So like when he's reaching for the cookie jar, you know, he's not just reaching for cookies. He's also barely not balanced very well on the chair and there's lots of <laughs> stuff around him. And so when he was chewing with his mouth open, you know, I, I just I just wanted to push that because it's not a good idea to eat a chicken bone. David. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> There's a lima bean in there too, I think. Oh, mm -hmm. oh that kind of harkens to your other book. That's neat. Uh, yeah, um, reference. Okay, so Ben T asks, what materials do you use for your illustrations? Pens, paints, markers, computer, and oh. he's age, um, actually Dylan's the one that's asking that. He's age six and he loves your books. Well, sounds like sounds like Dylan wants to be an artist, or probably already is. Um, you know, and that's something too. I I hope you guys, you know, stuck inside and everything that uh, you got lots of crayons or pens or paints and stuff, and uh, you know, because that's a good way to to spend time. Um, for this, I used markers, but that's just because it's kind of quick. And um, but for my illustrations, I I normally use paint. I used acrylic paint. For a long time which is a sort of a thick watercolor paint mm -hmm. uh, and then a few years ago i switched to oil paints um because i just love them they're all squishy and yummy but they, <laughs> they that's the problem they, they stink really bad and then um i did a book uh just just recently called how um called mr noggin body gets a hammer and yeah. that's mostly done in uh, pen and ink so I like to kind of play around and use different things. Cool, I like to mix it up. Yeah. All right, let's see, uh, Justina says, hi David, How? why do you always like to write about animals? I'm six years old and very curious. So 
Um, oh. Yeah. Let's yeah. Be well, you know, the, the funny thing about the animals is they're all kind of humans, aren't they? Deep down. They, and the thing is that different animals kind of are like different parts of humans, you know? So like uh, a dog might be the goofy part of a human, like Roy, or a cat might be the quiet, um, graceful part of a human. And uh, it's just, you know, I don't know, sometimes I write about kids too. I mean, no David, he's a kid and stuff. But it's fun to draw animals, so, you know. Cool. Yeah. Um, let's see. Do, let's see. Do you want to point out where Fergus may be hiding in Roy Diggs dirt? We have Deborah oh, yeah. curious about that. I meant to do that. We can find Fergus in the new book. Yeah, I'll show you. Okay. Okay. He is right there. There he is. Yeah. yeah. We're peeking out there. there yeah, he is. Sometimes he's really hidden. Other times he's not. Um, you know, one time I did a a book. It was a Hawaiian, ancient Hawaiian folk tale, and there is absolutely no good reason for a little Scottish dog to be in ancient Hawaii. So I had to really hide him in that one. And oh. then there, <laughs> there, there's a few books that um, I made before Fergus was born. So Fergus isn't in those. Oh. Um, and it's kind of funny because people will, every once in a while, somebody comes up to me with one of those books and goes, I have looked everywhere for Fergus and, and I can't find him anywhere. Where is he? And, and you know what I tell them? I say, keep looking. <laughs> <They'll be looking laughs> Just got it a little quick. <laughs> um okay let's see we do want to clarify let's see stc what breed is roy um and that's actually liam age seven logging on so um what specific breed is he again uh, okay so well in real life he's a west highland white terrier a westie and that's what fergus is too but it, for this book since i didn't want people to get you know i wrote a book about fergus also so I didn't want people to get them mixed up. So I changed Roy's look a little bit. Um, so I would say he's he's probably kind of a mutt, but maybe a Jack Russell Terrier. He looks a little like a Jack Russell to me. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and, and Roy, in real life, if you um, like shaved off all his fur, he'd look like a Jack Russell if you painted spots on that stuff. Okay. Um, let's see. Charlotte wants to know where do you get your materials. Um, I suppose your art materials for drawing or anything that helps you write the story? Hmm. Well, I mean, I, I get them uh, right now. I get them online. <laughs> but normally I like to go to the arts. I just go to a big art store and um, you know, there's a couple around and I like to go browse and stuff. Um, she may have been asking where I get my ideas too, um, oh. which is a, a question I get asked a lot. And that's a, it's, it's a funny thing. I, ideas because they can come from anywhere um sometimes it's it's almost like there's a story fairy that comes down and taps me <laughs> on the head of wand and i go hey i've got an idea um but other times i get ideas from like my friends or my family um or things i just see sometimes um they're just completely made up um <laughs> And I get I, I play this game and you guys can do this too. It's called the wouldn't it be weird if game. And you just start by saying, wouldn't it be weird if, and then you think of something weird, like, wouldn't it be weird if my nose was in my armpit? Yeah. <laughs> or wouldn't it be weird if I turned into my mom? You know, that kind of thing. And that's where I got the idea for a bad case of stripes. So I just woke up one morning and I said, wouldn't it be weird if instead of chicken pox, you got different colored stripes? And then I had to think about, you know, why she got stripes and what happened when she got them and how she got cured and all that. So that's a good way. And then one way too, like with Mr. Noggin Body, was I, the thing is, I never know where ideas are going to come from. So I write them all down in my, notebook my sketchbook um, i even write down the ideas i think are dumb because sometimes they turn out to be the best ones 
or they make me think of another idea that's a good one. Other times I'll get an idea and I'll go, oh, 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 I am a genius. This is an incredible idea. And I'll write it down and then I'll look at it the next day and I'll go, oh, oh, oh I am not a genius. This is a oh, really yeah. lame idea. <laughs> you never know. You never so, know. And, and then sometimes I just doodle in my sketchbook and I draw funny characters. And uh, that's where Mr. Noggenbody came from. Was he just popped out one day and he made me laugh. So I just kept drawing him till I had a story. That's great. Yeah. And you know what? Actually, Felix uh, Diaz did ask, what, where do you get ideas? So that helps answer all of that. Um, there you go, Felix. Yeah, there you go. And back to uh, Charlotte. She did want to know, does Roy have a favorite toy? Oh, yes, he does. He, uh, <laughs> he's got a lot of toys. Um, but his favorite toy is a donut, a squeaky donut that's about right. to And uh, he comes up to us um, every night uh, and when, when he can't go outside anymore he, with his donut and he scratches at me. And so we, like, we start out by trying to chase him to get the donut and then he lets us catch him and then we play tug of war with the donut. And then finally we throw the, we roll the donut and I try to make it roll around corners and stuff. Which yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We'll tell you what, we're going to start wrapping up. I think we have time for two more questions. Um, Luke with Merch um, wants to ask, why does Roy hate baths, baths? And was he named Roy because of the spots on his body? <laughs> well, Luke, um, he hates he hates baths because he loves dirt. And, <laughs> you know, so if, if – you give him a bath that ruins all the good work he's been doing for about a week of getting dirty. You know, he says, I was just getting there. <laughs> you know, um, and the spots on Roy's back, uh, he doesn't really have those spots in real life. I put those on, uh, just as part of part of the book, a fun thing for people to, uh, you know, maybe the third time they read it or something, they'll go, Hey, wait a minute. Those spots spell Roy. So I like to put things in there that, you know, people can, can find. That's a fun surprise. And then it looks like our last question um, that we have time for today is going to be um, from Gia and Gabriel Flory over at John Eaton Elementary. And they want to know, how did you get so good at drawing? Um, so, oh. yeah. Well, I drew all the time. Um, ever since I could really hold a crayon or anything, I have always just loved drawing. So I practiced a lot. Um, and then when I, I got a little older, I went to uh, college. Um, I went to an art school for college, and they taught me a lot of stuff too. Um, but really, um, with drawing, you learn by doing it a lot. You know, same with writing. You know, just a lot of practice, and it's fun. I just think it's fun. Yeah. That's great advice. All right. So that's all the time we have today for our questions. Thank you guys for using that feature. We've enjoyed that and yeah. getting to hear from you. And thank you so much, David, for joining uh, us. Well, thank and you. I, I hope that helped pass a little time today. And and to the people at Politics and Pros, thank you so much. You know, I was supposed to be on a big tour visiting schools and bookstores, and I was supposed to be at the store this week. and. I was bummed I couldn't make it, so this is great. Well, thank you for joining us this way, and thank you so much, viewers, for joining us in this new format. We hope you had fun, and don't forget you can click the green Buy the Book button to get your copy of Roy Dick's Dirt. Um, we'll ship it to you free of charge. You can also shop our store online for other David Shannon books, and you can click the Follow button on your screen to get notifications for other politics and prose Crowdcast events, and check out our website for updated event listings. You can also follow our children and teens department on social media under at kids and pros for updates on our events. And we hope to see you again soon. Have a fun time reading and from us to you, we'll say bye. Stay safe, everyone. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.